be better to just play it as a medium shot with the situation. Yeah, I think maybe. Let's take that. Can't do it with your head down. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, that's not bad. Let's do that. What's going on on my YouTube? It is I'm Jacob with another movie review for you guys. Starting a new director project in today's video, diving into the complete filmography of Stanley Kubrick. And in today's video, I'll be reviewing Stanley Kubrick's directing debut from 1953, a movie he made called Fear and Desire. After their airplane crashes behind enemy lines, four soldiers must survive and try to find a way back to their battalion. However, when they come across a local peasant girl, the horrors of war quickly become apparent. So Fear and Desire was originally released back in 1953, and like I said, this marked the directing debut of Stanley Kubrick, who is now widely regarded as one of the greatest directors of all time. He's made some of the best made movies on a technical level, and he's one that has a deep amount of respect and love from many, many film fans that span generations at this point. And Stanley Kubrick's made remarkable films like 2001 A Space Odyssey, A Clockwork Orange, The Shining, Full Metal Jacket, Doctor Strange Love, and so many other movies. I kind of have a love-hate relationship with Stanley Kubrick personally. It's no secret I'm not the biggest Stanley Kubrick fan. I, I do respect the craftsmanship that he puts in all of his movies. I struggle to connect with his movies more so on a story level. Well, all of his movies, especially the older he got, he made some really, really incredible looking movies that some of them will be intriguing to revisit, but we'll see how my thoughts are on some of these Stanley Kubrick films going forward. Now, I have never seen Fear and Desire before. In fact, when I started this director project, I had never even heard of this movie. And when looking up this movie, Kubrick apparently doesn't want you to know about this movie either. He's He may not be with us any longer, but he was so dissatisfied with this movie, despite the fact that he directed, produced it, and edited this movie, he didn't care for this one. I think because it was his first movie and he felt like an amateur at this point, I guess he thought this felt inferior to the film that he was perfecting his craft in years later. So he tried to have this film destroyed. He did not want people to watch this movie. Thankfully, this movie is available. I've seen this film pop up on different streaming services, so you can check him out on these various streaming services. Uh, but Kubrick was not satisfied with this movie, and this movie doesn't have the best reception as far as uh, comparing it to other Kubrick movies. And to be honest, if you compare this to other Stanley Kubrick films, you're going to shoot yourself in the foot for that because it's definitely not on the same quality as your 2001 or The Shining or Doctor Strangelove, all, all the movies that he's made after this movie. Because this movie definitely does feel, like Kubrick said, amateurish in comparison. And I kind of get why Kubrick was frustrated with this movie, as I don't think the movie's that good, but I wouldn't have wanted to destroy my own movie at the same time. I mean, give people a chance to watch the movie and see where the director got his start and then see the movies that he made afterward where he continued to one-up and improve his craft over time. I mean, this directors have to have a stepping stone at some point. And even though this movie is not that good, I guess I'm kind of glad it exists as it was how Cooper got his start. And with each new movie, he was more confident in, you know, like I said, perfecting his craft and, you know, making the movies that we that people love him for in this day and age. And this movie itself, I um, mean, as far as positives go, I mean, I like the premise on paper and the themes that Kubrick established in this movie, I guess, were kind of building blocks and they were themes that stuck with him. And some of his better movies, I know he would tackle similar themes of like of uh, war and some of the horrors that lie within it and how it uh, has a, a negative effect on people. Uh, he uses that in uh, Paths of Glory, which I thought was a fantastic movie. I'm excited to revisit that one. 
I haven't seen Full Metal Jacket yet, but I'm pretty sure he uses the same themes in that movie as well. I've heard that movie is really good. This one, you can see where the director got his start. I guess it's a subject matter that he's passionate on, and I guess you can see seeds of what he did in better movies with this movie. But the execution of it is where the film falls apart. I think because this movie is only an hour long, it just doesn't have the runtime to flesh out the themes and the characters that we follow. Also, the personalities of the characters are not interesting at all. The acting isn't really that good. And uh, the personalities are as dry as a wet mop. Like, I don't care about any of these characters. Uh, their quest for survival and the... Uh, kind of like the loss of humanity they face along the way because of them being in this wartime environment and, and they're near their lives on the line and you know, they uh, do some pretty, some of the characters do some really despicable things because of uh, some of the nature of being in this environment and some of the survival skills that they uh, get into, especially when this uh, peasant girl gets brought into the situation. Things got a little rough and a little bit uncomfortable when we get over there, but uh, I feel like that side of, uh, I think that side of the story, I think Brian De Palma might have taken his influence for his film Casualties of War, and Casualties of War, I would say, is a much better, much more brutal, and much more powerful movie compared to Fear and Desire, which is pretty amateurish, like I said, in comparison. Uh, this movie, I don't care for it. Uh, the editing is pretty shockingly bad at times for a Kubrick film. I get that it's 1953, but there's so many better movies that came out in 1953, which were better structured than this. There's like this one like action scene of the movie, which I was rolling my eyes at how stupidly bad it was. Like you see a close up of a character punching another character and you see hand fall into the character's food. I'm like that's all you were able to do back then, Kubrick? I mean I'll give you credit for trying, but you still got a lot to learn in how to make a movie. That's all I'll say there. Fear and Desire is interesting in the fact that this was Stanley Kubrick's first movie. I think that's the only reason that some people remember it is because it was Stanley Kubrick's first movie. And they enjoy seeing where the director got his start. I had never even heard of this movie until compiling the list. I don't recommend it unless you're a Stanley Kubrick completionist and you want to watch all his movies. If you're not as big on Kubrick, I definitely don't recommend checking it out or this being your first Stanley Kubrick film. I suggest either Spartacus or The Shining maybe as your introduction to Kubrick, but Fear and Desire, definitely don't start with this one. It's not a good movie. I give Kubrick credit for trying to uh, make something out of it with the themes, but when I don't get in, when the characters aren't interesting, when the filmmaking's not that good, and when the hour long runtime doesn't do enough to flesh out the themes and the characters, this is just a dull, monotonous, and very tedious affair. Even with its short runtime, I was struggling to get into this movie. But that's just my honest opinion. Thankfully, even though I'm not the biggest fan of Soma Kubrick's quote-unquote best films, uh, some of his movies I respect his craft, but I struggle to get into the story and, and the pacing of his movies. But this movie, I can say... I thought the Kubrick movies I've actually seen, this is easily my least favorite because mainly it's boring and there's nothing that remotely interesting, especially on a filmmaking level. So Fear and Desire is definitely a weak link in Kubrick's filmography, but I know he got better from here and it's exciting to see some of his other movies, especially the ones I've never seen before. So at the end of the day, I'll be giving Fear and Desire a one and a half out of five stars. And on the 100 point scale, it's getting a 26 out of 100. So that wraps up my review of Fear and Desire as part of my Stanley Kubrick director project where I'm going through his complete filmography from his directing debut all the way to his last film. I hope you enjoyed this video and join me next time in this director project. As I'll be reviewing Stanley Kubrick's next film, a movie called Killer's Kiss, another film I had never heard of before starting this director project. So, will it be better than Fear and Desire and Least? I guess you'll have to find out in the next video, so be on the lookout for my review of Killer's Kiss coming to the channel real soon. 
But if you've seen Fear and Desire, let me know down in the comments below what you thought of the film. Do you love it? Do you hate it? Were you mixed on it? But whatever your thoughts are, please be civil and respectful of others. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Click the subscribe button to see more content and the notification bell next to it so you can be notified of future videos. If this is your first video, besides movie reviews, I also do TV reviews, ranking videos, and other fun stuff along the way. I have some more videos planned for you soon. Hope you all have an amazing day. God bless, and I will see you next time. Goodbye!